Hello, I am Arun Jaswal and uh, I am working with Professor Shobha Shukla. This, la this lab is a uh, combined facility of uh, Professor Shobha Shukla and Professor Sumit Taksena. In this lab, we, uh, as the name of the lab is Narrow Structures Engineering and Mod Modeling Laboratory, so we work on uh, design and synthesis of uh, nano structures and we keep on studying their effects and uh, their application. There are several state of art instruments that uh, that are available with us. As we know, uh, the first uh, thing is our two photon lithography setup. This is uh, this is equivalent to a state of art 3D additive manufacturing facility. So as we know, uh, the semiconductor revolution was about miniaturization of devices. So for miniaturization of devices, what we require is we need the smallest uh, resolution. Like uh, the better the resolution, you can fit in more and more devices and you can make the system more compact. So uh, mostly there are several uh, sophisticated instruments for that. Uh, this is our state of art facility for 3D additive manufacturing. 3D, in 3D additive manufacturing, it is basically a tool to design a 3D microstructure or nanostructure with a well-defined architecture. So uh, for, uh, for our consideration, if we have to design a microfluidic device or any other small sensor. So for miniaturization, we look into the sub-wavelength resolutions or sub-micron features and we assemble it layer by layer to get a particular device uh, or other sensors in the application. So there are several features that include uh, high speed fabrication and uh, other features. So this is our two photon lithography setup. And in this setup, we are using a femtosecond laser. Uh, this is a nano fabrication facility. We call it two photon lithography. Lithography is a technique of describing some uh, design or some defined pattern into some polymer material or uh, other things like glasses or stone. So in this system, we use a femtosecond laser. Femtosecond laser is, uh, the pulse width of a laser is 140 femtosecond. So femtosecond uh, is order of, of order of 10 to the power minus 15 seconds. And uh, within that time, within that time, we can uh, excite a material, excite an electron. And uh, before it reaches down, uh, some other chemical reactions are induced. So the basic uh, benefit of this uh, two photon system is, in general we know that uh, we are aware of photoelectric effect, right? In photoelectric effect, until unless the energy is more than the work function, uh, electron will not be emitted. But in this case, even with the half of the energy, we can induce those phenomena. So basically in here we use a polymer material and this, uh, this is the laser head from where we have guided the beam and coupled it to a microscope. So on this microscope, there is a piezo positioner stage and this uh, piezo positioner stage can be controlled and moved with a precision of 2 nanometer. So 2 nanometer is uh, fairly small when we are uh, considering a micro miniature device. So in this, uh, using this facility, we have reached up to 140 nanometer resolution. So, and uh, that is compared to whatever is reported by other groups in uh, all over the world. So, one of the best, this is one of the best fabrication facility in the world. We have reported a fabrication recently, like a few weeks ago. We have devised a result that is uh, printing performance at 100 millimeter per second. That is comparable to the industrial results. Can you please repeat it? Uh, the last statement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in uh, recently, uh, uh, in uh, two three weeks ago, we have uh, uh, published uh, our result that is uh, fabrication at 100 millimeter per second speed, and uh, that is uh, among the best uh, resolution, uh, best fabrication speed reported in our domain. So basically, what we do is uh, the femtosecond pulses are focused using a objective, 100x objective. So at the, generally how do we write? If we have to write, what we do is, 
either suppose this is a pen and this is a paper if i have to write what i do is i can move the pen to write the write the any arbitrary structure or i can move the sample so in this setup we are moving the sample and we write design arbitrary structures hello everyone this is uh, dr rahul kumar das from nemo lab so right now what you are visualizing is a uv instrument which is normally used to trace the absorbance of any material or molecule dispersed in a solvent or it could be directly a uv solid samples now moving on to the next uh, instrument what we have is a spectrofluorometer in this what we do is we particularly try to sense and test the fluorescence of any sample now the fluorescence uh, property is very important when it comes to differentiate between molecules as well as materials so this instrument uh, has a range of excitation in the uv as well as in the visible range My name is Dr. Chandan Kumar. I am a uh, postdoctoral fellow uh, working with Professor Subhash Shukla. So in this lab, we are working on uh, solar cells. So these solar cells are fabricated using two materials. That is, uh, one is uh, active material that is called for sky. And that interface layer, we use that uh, whole transport layer and electron transport layer. That can be an organic material and can be an organic material. So after making that solar cell, we test this solar cell using this solar simulator. The function of this solar simulator is to give similar light as we receive from sun. So in this solar simulator, we have this Zenon lamp. This Zenon lamp will give complete light. So there is no differentiation uh, between that pair lamp. So using that simulator, they, they, they differentiate within their Wavelength. So according to like in uh, solar simulator we have highest intensity for about 500 nanometer. So it will give for that light. So you can see here we can on that uh, shutter. So here we can see the light. Here we have this light spot of 50 mm by 50 mm. So any solar cell we can make with this size can be tested and one more we have facility that it is concentrator so at a point we can concentrate maximum solar light mm -hmm. so this solar after placing here solar cell for example like here is solar cell we connect this using that measurement unit called electrical measurement setup that is source measuring unit so in this we apply a source and measure their current. So this is from Keithley. So this is connected to the computer. So where we can collect data in form of current and voltage. So from collected current voltage, we can calculate short circuit current, open circuit voltage of any solar cell, and then we can evaluate their efficiency. So these are the function of this instrument. Hi, this is Madhurima Dev and I am a fourth year PhD student in uh, Nemo Dab and my work is on graphene based sensors for heavy metal sensing in water. So what we generally do is we develop a chemi-resistive sensor. Here as you can see we use this probe station. We can use it in two probe method or in four probe method. Right now I am showing it in the two probe uh, mode. And uh, we have an inbuilt microscope here so that we can uh, put the probes at the right position in a very precise manner. And this is the source meter with the help of which we can set the current input or the voltage input and we can also measure the corresponding resistance or uh, the corresponding voltage and current respectively 
and accordingly we check the conductivity change in our sensor when we are adding the analyte on top of the sensor film as you can see the sensor film here this is a uh, re reduced graphene oxide film that we have used and we have functionalized it on the basis of the analyte that we want to uh, sense here and depending on the resistivity change or the conductivity change we decide uh, how much our material is sensing the material i mean sensing the analyte and uh, we also use the source meter for checking the solar cell efficiency and everything so it is a common instrument in terms of solar cell experiments as well as sensing experiments thank you so all of us are very happy to be a part of neo lab and we are very thankful to our professors professor shobha shukla and professor sumit satyana for providing us all these facilities and for continuously guiding and motivating us and inspiring us to do better than our best Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so uh, about myself, uh, I was born like in a small city in Jhansi. Jhansi is only known for Rani Jhansi, right? Then uh, I did my schooling and uh, up to up to uh, class twelfth, and then I did my graduation uh, in physics and maths. and uh, at that time uh, i was exposed to actually maths and i started appreciating basic sciences so i forgot engineering uh, and uh, but my aim was to join you know one of the iits so uh, i couldn't make through je but <laughs> i got admitted into the msc two years program so i finished my masters two years program at iit kanpur and then uh, i worked as assistant scientist uh, in uh, cern and gsi where i was working on uh, instrumentation and uh, basically uh, on uh, uh, something which was related to you know particle physics so but uh, uh, i did not enjoy too much there and i came back uh, joined uh, again as a senior project associate at iit kanpur and then i wrote my gre and went uh, to us uh, to do my phd in material science and engineering uh, and uh, i wanted to work in optical materials the reason was that i was working before uh, in optical materials uh, when i was a senior project associate but later on uh, i mean there was no vacancy in optical materials so uh, you know Uh, i started uh, this uh, working on density functional theory with my advisor who was actually an experimentalist so life was very difficult because i was the only person who was doing you know any kind of theory there but my advisor was very uh, supportive and uh, he was very good and uh, finally you know i could uh, make through successfully through my phd submitted my thesis and i went for my first post doc uh, at the university of illinois at arvana champaign and uh, i stayed there for very i think a couple of months uh, the reason was personal reasons because my wife was at harvard and i was at uiuc it used to take you know like almost 8 to 10 hours for me to come back from uiuc to uh, harvard uh, and workload was of course quite a bit so then i shifted to harvard Uh, where I was uh, working as postdoc uh, at uh, Department of Physics, and then uh, you know while all these things were going through, I applied. Uh, I was applying for various uh, positions, and uh, fortunately, I got uh, an interview call uh, at you know at IIT Bombay, and uh, I was successful. Uh, they offered me a position. I grabbed it. <laughs> I mean, there was nothing uh, to be choosy about because no. this was probably the best uh, you know, I could have. No. So I joined as assistant professor here. So, yeah. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, After I joined here uh, as assistant professor, uh, I started because we did not have too much of infrastructure. We started, uh, you know, uh, some theoretical work. and uh, we started with two areas two different areas one was meta materials and other was uh, uh, you know related to density functional theory 
uh, but at that time you know uh, not many uh, students uh, would join something like density function theory so more focus was on uh, you know uh, doing uh, photonics or metamaterials uh, i was an experimentalist it was mm -hmm. just that during my phd you know i i, I did uh, theoretical stuff but otherwise i was an experimentalist so then uh, later on uh, you know we explored several areas of metamaterials and uh, uh, so that part is uh, you know i will not talk about that mm -hmm. and then slowly uh, we started uh, venturing out into energy storage and uh, now we are working big time into you know uh, energy storage supercapacitors and uh, 2d materials is one aspect which we are looking at and uh, we were actually very fortunate that we were able to synthesize stannin and stannin is you know highly sought of after material and it has been only synthesized by two groups one is ours and the other is at stanford and these are uh, to my understanding these are the only two you know known reported uh, synthesis of this material this is very interesting because it is supposed to be a room temperature topological insulator and uh, so uh, the properties i mean it's a sort of material just like graphene uh, and then uh, we are also into density functional theory and uh, yeah so for most of these works you know we have published quite a lot we have a good team uh, over here uh, we have all the facilities uh, related to you know, these uh, research areas and uh, for my contributions uh, to uh, these uh, in energy related uh, areas and for stannin uh, i was actually awarded fellowship uh, of uh, royal society of chemistry in london and institute of uh, materials mining in uk and for our water related uh, work um, we were uh, i was awarded fellowship fellow of the year award 2021 by national environmental science academy yeah so i think uh, that's pretty much about research thank you uh, if you if, if you can talk about uh, numbers i mean how many postdocs or phd students okay have. okay so uh, the group has uh, a large number of postdocs i think we have uh, at least uh, six of them seven actually okay. we have seven postdocs and uh, number of phd students is quite large i believe i think around 15 or so Uh, at least i would say and uh, the total group strength as of now is something around 50 uh, we have i think around 15 masters and uh, dual degree students also to add to our contingent so uh, yeah thank you thank you sir thank you very much thank you